Hello everyone, um, I'm going to make a quick uh, video today uh, talking about uh, some tips for auto exposure and auto white balance uh, on the A6400. Um, I just recorded a short clip recently and I got it loaded up on my iPad so we're going to look at that and we're going to talk a little bit about it. So the reason why I made this video is because uh, lately I've been recording on the iPhone a lot more uh, than on my A6400 and I'd really like to get back to recording on uh, on this camera and um, so uh, one of the things that I did was I got myself some uh, step up rings so that I can use my uh, ND filters uh, with this camera. So before we get to the tips on uh, auto exposure and auto white balance I'll just give a quick rundown of the settings. So I used my uh, 18 to 135 millimeter lens, uh, fully wide at 18 millimeters and fully wide open at 3.5. Uh, and I did that uh, with the help of the uh, ND8 filter. Uh, it was an overcast day when I shot this clip, which I'll show you in a second. But, uh, but even on an overcast day, uh, there's enough light out there to uh, make this camera stop down to an f6. So, uh, so anyway, I put on an ND8 filter, um, and, um, and that's what I used. I used the uh, standard uh, 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 profiles. I didn't use any picture profiles. The picture profile was off and the uh, creative style was set to standard as well. Okay, so I'm gonna play the clip for you now. I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, you know, what I did to uh, achieve this shot. So one of the things I noticed when I recorded this uh, video clip uh, was that I had my uh, auto exposure set to multi-segment uh, auto exposure. And uh, what I found was that it tended to underexpose my face. And this was even though the uh, setting was uh, set to prioritize my face. You can, you can actually uh, set that uh, in the menu settings. Um, but I find that the multi-segment uh, auto exposure, uh, in that scenario, you know, where we're kind of backlit by the sky, it still tended to underexpose my face. And so the tip that I have for you is to use uh, center weighted average, which is what I did. I, uh, I did the center weighted average, put my face in the center of the frame, and then you know got the exposure um, properly for my face, and then just use the auto exposure lock. I locked it, and then um, uh, you know gives you a good exposure for your face. I actually think I didn't manage to uh, lock the. Uh, exposure for this particular uh, video clip um, but you know I, I stayed more or less in the center of the frame and so you, there weren't any weird uh, exposure shifts but if you're the type of person who likes to do the rule of thirds thing you know where you're off to the side then you will definitely want to lock that auto exposure. So the next tip that I have is for uh, white balance. Uh, I love using auto white balance. I know that uh, if you are a professional uh, uh, filmmaker uh, you, know, you, you can't rely on that. You want something that's reproducible. Um, and so you'll use manual white balancing techniques. Um, but you know, for most of us, and certainly if you're watching this video, you're probably doing auto white balance. And I, I think the Sony A6400 does a great job, as it does most cameras. Um, and, but what I find is that uh, the colors tend to come out very accurate, but a little bit cool for my liking. Um, you know. Uh, for these types of videos is not always about accuracy it's also about setting the right mood and uh, usually I want uh, the picture to be a little bit warmer and so uh, one of the settings that you might not um, know is there or might have forgotten uh, is that you can set the auto white balance to prioritize the ambient light rather than um, standard which is probably what you have it set on uh, you can also choose for it to prioritize uh, white. And um, so the, the way I understand it is that, uh, you know, if you have the white balance set to prioritize white, it'll, tr it'll find a white object and try its best to make that object white. So, you know, if you have a white wall, for example, uh, it's going to do its very best to make that look perfect white. The problem with that is that if your light is colored, and most lights are colored to some degree, you know, it might be a little bit orange, 
that's a very common uh, light. Um, you know, your white your wall should appear a little bit orange, um, but if your white balance um, is working to make that wall look perfect white, what it'll tend to do is make everything look a little bit cooler than um, than how it appears to your eyes. And so uh, I found that if you set the auto white balance to prioritize ambient, um, what it does is it tries to just um, you know uh, accurately reflect the the color of your light sources, and um, it it subtly makes the image a little bit warmer. Uh, it's not very dramatic, but you don't want it to be dramatic. You want it to still be accurate, but just a touch warmer. And I, I really like that look. So that's a tip: is to uh, you know, change your auto white balance setting to ambient. This next tip also has to do with auto white balance, and it was something that I uh, didn't realize actually until yesterday. You can lock the auto white balance in, on the A6400, and this was something that I honestly did not know about uh, for the longest time because it's not a setting that you can find on the quick function. Uh, uh, menu and if you dive into the actual full menu settings uh, you won't find it there either uh, so the way to lock auto white balance is to set it to one of your custom buttons so uh, you know when, when you go into the menus and, and you you know are you're setting your uh, custom buttons uh, it'll give you the option to do an auto white balance lock uh, I just found out about that yesterday and um, so I have it set to the the right D-pad button. So that's a that's a trick because um, I really like auto white balance on these cameras. They do a fantastic job, um, but uh, but uh, you know I don't like when the white balance shifts. And uh, so in order to avoid that, you either had to use one of the presets, which didn't always look great, or you had to manually dial in your white balance, which is a whole process in and of itself and, and it's a real pain. Um, I made a video actually about the Moment app and I kind of complained about that uh, because uh, the Moment app, you know, lets you do auto white balance or set the, uh, set the white balance but doesn't let you uh, um, lock it the way Filmic Pro does. So anyway, the A6400 also lets you do that. So I think that's it for this video. It's a short one. Um, and uh, I mostly just wanted to play with some settings on my A6400, get back to recording on my A6400, and kind of test out the ND filters on my 18-135mm uh, to 135 millimeter lens. Now for people who have stuck around uh, to this point, the reason why I got the ND filters for that lens is because that lens uh, is stabilized. You know, I find that uh, if I'm walking around with the Sigma 16mm, f1.4 lens is a great lens um, but it, it's, it's just too shaky you know even even at 16 millimeters the, the shake is too much so uh, I wanted to try it um, using a stabilized lens now that said you can look at the you can look at the footage I'm looking at it right now and it's still really shaky so uh, and it, uh, now granted um, I recorded that without doing any special walking techniques. I wasn't trying to be, um, and, you know, I wasn't doing the ninja walk. I was just walking regularly, and uh, it's still very shaky. But uh, I think, I think I'm going to stick with it. I think a little bit of stabilization is better than no stabilization. And then also, you don't really need f1.4 um, outdoors. So I'm probably going to rely on my 18 to 135 for. For my outdoor video, uh, uh, switching to the Sigma f1.4 only for indoor shots or for nighttime shots. The other thing I'm going to say is I'm going to try and edit this video on my iPad uh, today. Um, so I got a little dongle that will allow me to transfer footage from my camera to the iPad. I want to give that a shot. Um, you know, I edit videos on my iPad using iMovie, which is kind of clunky, you know, um, compared to DaVinci Resolve on my laptop. Um, I love that DaVinci Resolve is fast and it's powerful and lets you do all kinds of things. Uh, but um, but I really also like editing just sitting on the couch, you know, or, or lying in bed. 
and the iPad lets you do that. Whereas if I'm editing on a laptop, I'm confined to a desk. So um, anyway, I'm gonna give that a try. I'm gonna try and edit this video on the iPad, okay? So that's it, I'll see you in the next one.